Hey guys, welcome to the first test ride of the e-bike 4.0. I thought I would uh, film this video whilst riding the bike, rather than out the back of my shed, just to make it a little bit more interesting. Now, I left off the last e-bike video uh, with the pulley being fixed, um, and then I ran into an issue with the motor vibrating. Now, I've managed to balance the motor since, and uh, I ran into a number of other issues with the motor. Uh, the secondary aluminium plate on the left here was actually causing some weird man magnetic issues with it uh, because it was running too close to the motor so I've had to cut a new motor mount um, I couldn't get the whole the full amount of power out of the motor it was um, it would only output about 80 amps whereas now this can go up to 110 amps uh, that's the peak obviously it's, it doesn't do that constantly um, but other than the e-bike working really well, I need to show you something really cool. You ready? How cool is that? So now you guys can see how much power I'm using and also how fast I'm going. Uh, I'm sure uh, there's going to be a lot of comments asking how I'm doing this on-screen display. Uh, so I'll just talk about that quickly first. Basically, the VESC, uh, which is a speed controller, controls the RPM of the motor. Um, you can buy a Bluetooth module for it and it logs the data onto your phone. I'll be posting links in the description of how you can do this. Um, I know I always praise the VESC 6, but it is just an amazing piece of equipment, which you can purchase from tramperboards.co.uk or is it .com. I'll link it down in the description below. Now I'm still getting used to this bike a bit because it has so much torque. That wasn't even full throttle and uh, I can't see what speed I'm doing right now but you guys will be able to see on the screen. I've got to be a bit careful around some of these paths. But um, yeah it's probably it's probably outputting just over two kilowatts. Um, I've had this motor peak at 3.95-ish, so almost four, but that's literally just a peak. It doesn't uh, average that amount of power. I'm still not going full throttle yet. <laughs> There'll be a, a more open path in a minute where I can put some power down. Now, the bike still isn't 100% finished, um, but it's 90% there. Um, I'll try and show you some images on the screen whilst I'm talking about stuff. I've um, had to do some other modifications to the motor. The shaft was slipping, uh, the motor shaft was slipping inside the, the motor because um, the whole housing of the motor spins and it has two grub screws that grip it to the main shaft but that was um, that was slipping so I had to CNC machine a plate with a semicircle like cut out of it which would sit onto the flat of the shaft and that's all solved now. I also had to um, I've also 3D printed a case for the motor as you can see here I need to neaten up these wires a bit but this 3D printed case just prevents your leg going in the motor so um yeah, it's looking pretty nice now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ride to the next biggest hill and uh, we'll see how well it climbs hills. Let's go. Now I'm coming up to what's probably the largest hill in my local area. Uh, whenever I fly my drones, you can see it from miles away. Um, but for some of you guys, this is going to be just like a little bump. I believe the the total elevation of the hill is about 77 metres, 250 feet, I think that's about right. And the path length is about 850 metres, I think. Um, it's not mega steep, but it's quite a long hill. Uh, if I, I, I believe I'm tracking this data GPS-wise as well, so I might be able to load the elevation data onto the screen. Um, but if not, then you're just going to have to take my word, it's quite steep. So it's 850 meters from here to the top. Just check everything is nice and cool. Motor's cool, 
batteries are cool, belt's tight. Right, let's see how quickly I can get up this hill. Check the GoPro's recording. GoPro's recording, it's low on battery, so we've got to make it up before the battery runs out. Let's go. It's alright, thank you. So yeah, as you can see, hills are no issue. That was fun. All right. Motor's a bit warm. Uh, it doesn't get much cooling inside this housing. Uh, what I want to do eventually is put a temperature sensor in here, linked to the speed controller. So yeah, gonna ride back now. Let's take it easy down the hill. Probably the only time I'll ever ride down a hill slower than I came up. So I'm back from the bike ride now and uh, I really wanted to talk a bit more about the bike on the descent from that hill. Uh, however, the GoPro ran out of batteries and I also got stung by a wasp or a bee on my neck. Um, so I had quite a sore neck for the last few miles of my ride. Uh, but other than that, the electric bike version four is working really well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run through specification of everything on the bike uh, like I've been doing with my previous electric bikes. Uh, starting up at the handlebars, there's the twist grip throttle uh, which is, I think they're designed for electric mopeds. Um, if you just search electric bike twist grip throttle on eBay, they're about 10-15 pounds, uh, pretty cheap. Moving a bit further down is the uh, 12 cell uh, 15 amp hour lithium ion battery that I made. Um, in total, it's 12 cell, so it's uh, about 50 volts, um, 15 amp hours. When I discharge it from uh, 4.2 volts down to uh, like a comfortable voltage, I think like 3.3 volts, uh, it's about 400 watt hours, I think, about 375 watt hours. Um, gives me about 15 to 20 miles of range, depending on you know how I ride it, obviously. Then moving a bit further down from there is the VESC. Uh, the VESC 6, which I mentioned uh, earlier on in this video to be the uh, genius bit of equipment that allows me to do that, you know, data logging and also show the OSD, the on-screen display um, for you guys to watch. Now, I did mention also I'm going to be 3D printing a cover for this. Uh, I will be using uh, a rubber material uh, to 3D print a rubber case for it. Um, and this will be most likely TPU. Uh, for my filament sponsor, 3D Prints UK. Uh, they supplied me with this uh, black filament, which is PETG plastic, and it's it's super solid. Um, I think I printed it with 40% infill, and it's there's no way that that's going to hit the motor, or your knee's going to hit the motor inside there. Um, so I'm really happy with that. Um, I know I always mention 3D Prints UK. Uh, they are my filament sponsor, and they do make great quality filament. I don't know if you can see the quality of that print but it's rather nice. So I'm looking forward to 3D print the TPU cover for this uh, to keep the wires protected and hopefully also keep any kind of uh, water off of it, you know, from splashed up from the front wheel. Hopefully it won't cause any issues. Now in terms of the motor mount, 
Um, obviously it's covered up now by this plastic piece, um, but this is the newer motor mount where it's spaced further away from the motor. Uh, I briefly mentioned it whilst riding. Uh, I was concentrating a bit too much on the riding. Um, but essentially when the motor rotates close to a metal, it doesn't have to be a ferrous metal, um, copper would do the same, copper and aluminium. Um, it has an effect called Lenz's law, I believe, uh, where the magnets induce a current in the plate and then that produces a force in the opposite direction. Um, most people learn it at school during physics where you drop a magnet down a copper tube and it you know, slows the descent rate. And it's the same with this. And it was just um, causing issues when the magnets were trying to be spun at above, I think it was above 90 amps uh, current draw of the motor. So with the new mount where it's spaced about 10 mil away from the actual magnets, it seems to be fine. So I thought I'd mention that just in case any of you guys are building an electric bike, make sure that you have uh, the motor away from any kind of um, metal plates. Now on the other side, if I can get in here, uh, there is the other, this is where the motor actually mounts to, uh, down here. And there's a 20 tooth pulley on the motor and a 40 tooth pulley on uh, the secondary drive shaft. Um, so it's a two to one ratio here. Uh, this, this belt, I bought a shorter belt. The original belt was 300 millimeters long, but I had to put tensioner here. Whereas this is a 295 millimeter belt and doesn't need a tensioner. So that's quite handy. Um, I also machined the guards off the edge of this pulley uh, because it was a nightmare to get this belt on and off with guards on both of them, seeing as I couldn't move the pulleys closer together. Um, so I've just yeah, machined the end off that pulley and um, it's relatively easy to pull it off now. Uh, it never comes off when riding uh, because the amount of guard on this pulley keeps it going straight with that pulley. Now going to the main drive output pulley, uh, to the rear wheel. Uh, this is a 20 tooth pulley and it drives a 1.5 meter belt, uh, 1500 millimeters. Um, and here you can see the, I guess you call it an idler bearing. Uh, it's mounted in a slot with a T slot nut on the, on the other side of this plate. Um, so all I have to do is I have to tighten up this, sorry, loosen the bolt. I can slide it up and down, tension the belt and tighten it and it locks in position. Um, so that's quite handy for tensioning the belt. Then to get the belt on and off, I just loosen that bolt, slide it down, and the belt just slides off the side of this pulley. Um, so this pulley is 20, has 20 teeth and it's spinning at half the speed of the motor because of the two to one ratio on the other side. Um, and then it's 20 teeth down to, sorry, up to 180 teeth so overall from the motor to the rear axle is a gear ratio of 18 to 1 I think um, so the motor spins 18 times per one revolution of the wheel now moving to the rear uh, if you've watched all my e-bike v4 uh, videos you'll be very familiar with this pulley uh, it's simply bolted to the disc brake uh, mount here uh, via lots of different bolts um, and then six separate aluminium pieces uh, which go out to this 3D printed ring. Now it seems to be holding up quite nicely. Um, I haven't had any issues with it yet. Uh, it does need a, a bit of adjustment uh, because it doesn't run quite true. Um, but I haven't had the belt slip off or anything and no cracks or anything anywhere. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So overall, apart from obviously my GoPro battery running out and uh, being stung by the wasp or bee, I'm pretty happy with the way the electric bike's going. I need to do a few more test rides on it. Um, I also plan to 3D print a cover for the pulleys on the other side. Um, the pulleys aren't that much of an issue of getting your leg stuck in it um, because your leg will just hit the side of this uh, large pulley and it's, it's not really got any sharp edges on it. So it shouldn't be an issue if your leg just touches it and you'll just bring your leg away. Um, however, if I let other people ride it, just, just so they don't like, you know, jam their ankle in it, um, I will put a cover on it. 
So, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Um, I think I've gone through enough details on this bike. Um, not quite sure of the power output exactly. Uh, in the video, I think it peaked at about 3.3 kilowatts. Uh, and I'm not sure of the range either, uh, because I need to do some more riding. Obviously the range will vary depending on uh, the riding style and also whether I'm riding on tarmac or off-road. So that'll be interesting to test out. Um, also, when I was riding, I mentioned I wanted to put a temperature sensor inside the motor. Um, I've ordered one, and I believe it does still data log uh, through the speed controller to my phone. Um, and I can also uh, program in a temperature cutoff, so if the motor gets too hot, it will start to decrease the acceleration. Um, which I probably don't want, because I like to have high acceleration. Nearly fell over. But... Um, it could be quite handy just to save the motor from burning out at all. So that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please click subscribe. And a huge, huge thanks to all of my patrons for making these weekly videos possible. I couldn't thank you any more, so I'll thank you once more time. Thank you very much, and I'll see you hopefully next week. Or maybe the week after. I'm not quite sure. Goodbye.